Hi, this is Chibamba Kanyama, welcoming you once again to Tili Pamozi, an initiative of Standing Bank to demonstrate its commitment to its clans during this COVID-19 period. Today, we are focusing on the topic, managing financial health and the importance of financial literacy in challenging times. And my guest will be Chilombo Tembo, the head workplace banking services. Let me just give an introduction from what has been researched around wellness, financial fitness or financial wellness, the rise of the global COVID-19 pandemic has caused economic repercussions across the globe. According to a study by Global Health and Wealth Consultants Mercer, employees' worries about money cost employers an estimated $250 billion a year. In replacing a stressed employee, therefore, a business can spend 50 to 60% of the employee's annual salary. Actually, the total costs associated with this turnover can range from 90% to 200% of the employee's annual salary, and this is according to a report by SHRIM Foundation. There has been some attempts to alleviate the immediate problem, primarily the COVID-19 relief interventions that have been put in place by Stanbic Bank in addition, of course, to the fund that was uh, released by government through the Bank of Zambia, where some 10 billion, billion kwacha was released to the market. Another way to help the customer as a bank now and in future is to improve, of course, financial literacy. The current crisis is an opportune time to focus on the importance of employee financial education. This is one area of focus by Stanbic at this particular time. And while many households and individuals in our country don't have a written financial plan because they think it's complicated, others do. And the bank is there to help most of those individuals come up with financial plans. But before we get to that issue, we shall f focus on workplace, workplace banking services offered by Stanbic. Chilombo, my pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you very much, Chilombo. Great. We come a long way. We worked together oh, yes. many years ago oh, at yes. Zambian Breweries. Yes. And nice to see that you are now going full from HR to actual banking services. How does it, that transition from HR to banking, how does it work? Well, um, it's, 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 it was basically an area where I thought to challenge myself. Yep. Um, I had done HR for over four years mm -hmm. and um, I wanted to get into mainstream business, mm -hmm. uh, leave my comfort zone, try out something different yep. and I've never regretted my move at Fantastic. All. Yeah. So you, you have not only managed within the sphere of workplace, you have moved, worked in other departments. How yes. is it to transit as I knew you were in HR uh, now true. to deal with actual banking. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. So uh, remember, we're coming from a fast-moving consumer goods company. Um, I joined the bank uh, in HR, um, where I had been for four years. Um, I then decided to move. Uh, I think what triggered that move was after I read a book called Move My Cheese. Um, I was sort of like in my element, in my comfort zone. Um, I wanted to challenge myself, um, get to know the business better. So I decided to move into another role, uh, into the mainstream business as a private banker, where I, I was in that position for s about six to seven months. Mm -hmm. um, and I was appointed as, uh, into a position as acting uh, head private banking. So acted in that role for, well, I was appointed eventually as mm -hmm. head of private banking. Um, and I stayed in that role for two years. Um, thereafter, transitioned into another role, the role that I'm currently in mm -hmm. right now, as um, mm -hmm. head of workplace banking. But I also look after another segment um, called direct banking. So we have private banking um, under retail. Then we also have the workplace banking. So in terms of the transition, though there's a career move, exactly. but in terms of the actual operations, you're mm -hmm. still dealing with people? I am dealing with people. Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at workplace banking, you're actually dealing uh, with the entire 
banking proposition. Because what we're doing is that we're taking our banking services to the workplace. So when we're looking at, when we're speaking to our employees, we basically cover uh, the entire uh, personal banking proposition within the workplace banking. Maybe define it more. Just let, let's assume I'm an employee of an institution, which I am. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just take me through from the time you take a visit to me. Mm -hmm. you, you are saying you visit the place? First of all, let's come with why did you do it? Okay. So the reason why we came up with workplace banking, taking banking services to the workplace, one, we wanted to make it convenient for our clients. Um, obviously, when, they, when their employees visit the bank, that's time, obviously, and time uh, yeah. is, is actually a cost. So we wanted to make it convenient for our clients and employees as well. Um, they can actually do their banking in a relaxed environment, in their workspace. Um, so we take our banking services to them. Uh, we onboard them from a transactional, from an investment savings perspective. Um, so that whole... Let, let's take, let me take you a bit okay. back. All right. So when you take banking services, you're actually talking about even opening an account or e what? Exactly. Let's get it from there. Okay, so yeah. we start from that yeah. angle. So when we go to the workplace, um, and obviously it's from a background where yeah. we already have a banking relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, where we have a memorandum of understanding signed, that's an MOU. So we arrange for a bank day, we set up, we speak to the employees. From there, we onboard the client. And when I say onboard, we are onboarding from a transactional perspective. By the time uh, we're done there, you're able to transact. You have your transactional account opened. You have your debit card with you. We set you up on all the digital platforms. You're knocking off from work, you pass through the ATM machine, and you're able to transact right there and then. You can actually buy your electricity, your Zesco, you can buy your, pay for your DSTV. So you're basically set up from the workplace. And how has that worked? Maybe just give us a, uh, before the COVID period, how mm -hmm. has it worked for the bank and for the client? Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, what we're trying to create is, is obviously uh, the convenience. There's a relationship already there. Um, so it's on that basis that we then, we then agree uh, with the employer um, that will provide banking services uh, to their employees. So from our angle, uh, we offer uh, preferential rates mm. under the workplace banking. That's um, interest rates um, from the lending perspective because there's, there is a relationship yeah. there. But not only that, like I said, we offer other solutions as well, uh, speaking to the needs of our clients. So we'll go to the workplace, uh, we'll speak to, we'll solution yeah. um, to employees, speak to them about our, what we have to offer as a bank. From then on, uh, based on their needs, we'll then uh, obviously uh, help them with uh, their transactional accounts, their savings, investments, as well as insurance. So we're basically a one-stop shop. So there's shop. A, an insurance component in it? There is definitely a, an insurance component. Okay. Uh, remember I said we're a one-stop shop? Yeah. We launched um, Stanbic Insurance Brokers. So we offer uh, under Stanbic Insurance Brokers both the short, uh, short term as well as the long term. So that's life. As well as, as, as well as the short-term insurance. Short-term, which is about motor vehicles. Motor vehicles. So those are included as well. That's, oh, that's also included. So if that's a need, once we've onboarded the client, and obviously they'll indicate, when we're speaking to the client, that we will ask the questions, and they'll indicate, we'll let them know that we have um, insurance and if that speaks to their need we're able to to offer them that and once they indicate that they actually want that uh, we'll then obviously onboard them uh, with the insurance um, as yeah. well. Given about conditions in Zambia where funerals happen often and people come into our pockets mm -hmm. as, as relatives I'm sure that you cover funeral as well. Is that part of that? Definitely, definitely. We do cover funeral um, as well. I mean, this is something that we can't run away from. And it actually helps our clients um, if they take up the, 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 the funeral policy. Because even in the unfortunate uh, event of death, they don't have to have that stress. They have the peace of mind that obviously they have that extra uh, money somewhere mm. that they can get to help give uh, a proper send-off to their loved one. 
and that money, uh, once the claim is pushed in, it's dispersed or given, uh, credited to the client's account uh, within 24 hours, even less than that. Um, no arguments, no, no fighting. Ag no fighting, no arguments. As long as um, the policy uh, was maintained and was active, um, there's no, f no arguments, no mm. fighting at all. We pay out the claims as and when they come through. Let me know about the kind of clients who are covered in the workplace. Uh, banking services. I presume it's everybody. Like, would you like to define? Is it parastatals? Is it private companies? What kind, are they government institutions? Who is, who is um, uh, eligible for this? Okay. So workplace banking, um, maybe just to simplify it, it's we enter into a banking relationship, an understanding uh, with the employer. Any employer? Any employer. Um, and these obviously um, uh, have, we're looking at it where we, we're able to provide banking services mm. for their employees, we solution for their employees. So we have that relationship from the employer perspective, obviously looking at us providing services to their employees. Yeah, initially I asked about how has this worked? Mm -hmm. I'm interested to know what the, the actual benefit this has had to the actual employee. Okay, for the actual employee, and I'll give you an example, uh, Chibamba. One, uh, you find that m some of the organizations that we, or institutions that we deal with, fast-moving consumer goods companies, um, the construction uh, companies, manufacturing uh, companies, some of their employees work in shifts. So they really don't have time to go to the bank. Um, so what we do is that we take the bank to them um, so that they, they at least have, we alleviate that stress of them trying to think of going to the bank. You remember, imagine you're a new employee and uh, you've been asked, because that's what actually mm -hmm, happens. Mm -hmm. You're asked to open an account when you join an organization. So we alleviate that stress. We'll bring the banking services to you. Uh, we'll, we'll open your transactional account all you need to do is advise your employer in terms of the account that we've opened. And at the end of the month, you have your salary. You're able to transact without even actually stepping a foot in the in the branch. Yeah, and, and I suppose that because the banking atmosphere can at times be intimidating. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, yes, so it you, can. So you're taking the bank to where to they the are, workplace. where they're very, very comfortable. Exactly. Yeah, so we say that financial and physical wellness are directly linked to uh, financial stress, like I said in my introduction. And now this has actually been aggravated or worsened by COVID-19. So this is having an impact on productivity mm -hmm. and, and, and planned absences from work, at times lower job performances, and even distractions on the part of the employees. Can you tell us, about workplace banking and how this has benefited the employer this time mm -hmm. during this particular period of COVID. Okay, so even before uh, COVID, mm. um, one of the things that we offer under workplace banking is obviously financial literacy or we we'll call it financial wellness yep. um, for employees. So we'll go to the workplace, um, we'll speak to uh, employees so that we give them a set of skills and knowledge so that they are able to make uh, informed decisions around uh, their finances. So that's one way where we come in as, 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 as workplace banking. So what have you been doing lately? What have been the experiences, especially now during the COVID period, uh, with regard to some of the employees mm -hmm. who are really stressed. Mm -hmm. Some of them may have loans with the bank. That's true. Of course, they are your clients, but they have loans with you. Have you done anything to support them? Oh, yes. So, and again, I'll refer back um, to before COVID. Yeah. So before COVID, we'll yeah. go to the workplace. Yeah. We have that physical interaction. Mm -hmm. But with COVID, I mean, there's all this social distancing. Um, we're not able to go there and speak to our clients. So what we have done is proactively engage uh, all our clients, mm. um, obviously under the workplace banking umbrella, um, just to find out about their challenges. How are they coping uh, during these very challenging times? And you find that employers will open up to say, look, we're stressed in this manner. 
Um, can, how can you come in as a bank to, our, to assist our employees? So it's from that angle, we then come in as a bank either to offer relief in form of a moratorium um, to, to their employees. There are certain cases as well where you have, we have individual working clients. We then have conversations with them. Um, if we see that we have quite a number from a certain organization, we would then take it upon ourselves as a bank to engage um, their employer from an organization mm, perspective. Mm. Just because so that cannot have an audience now exactly. physically with all the employees yes, on location because yes. of the same distancing. Yes, mm -hmm. So yes. you, you decide to engage the employer and what, what, what do you discuss? So usually? it's from that angle, I uh, will just find out how the business is faring. Obviously yeah. we do understand that these are very uh, difficult times, very challenging times. You find that certain businesses are not uh, operating uh, mm. normally. Um, so they've had to actually cut off um, stuff. stuff. Mm. That's one. Some stuff have been sent off on uh, unpaid, unpaid leave, leave mm. um, without uh, a salary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's 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 very difficult. Um, it's a very difficult time. Mm. Mm. So we're coming in as a bank um, to try and um, sort of ease that stress uh, on the employer because obviously they they they. they um, they have some stress on their cash flow, mm, maybe mm. they're not, they're unable to pay yeah. um, their full salaries. So from that angle, uh, also for the employee, um, we're able to offer that relief. Imagine uh, you're going on half pay and you start thinking of how you're going to pay off, make your own, yeah. your loan repayments. And um, you have a family to, to feed as well. Mm. Um, obviously you'll be stressed um as an employee and you expect it to come to work and function um, so we're helping at least the employer uh, to ensure that they have a stress-free uh, workforce yeah let's turn to the issue of financial wellness now which is financial um well-being financial mm -hmm. planning how important is it to people whether covid or not covid just generally so financial planning um, is very important and uh, reason being it sort of like gives us a focus mm. in terms of uh, where we are right now and where we want to be. Um, I know we we're talking earlier and uh, I'm making reference to an example where you're driving mm. um, in the night and you, your, your lights are off. Mm. Um, so if you do not have a plan, you, sort can't of like, yeah, you can't see what's ahead, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You can't see what's ahead. Yeah. So I think it's very important that one has a financial plan uh, in place uh, in order to know where they want to be in the next five years. It's, so, it's a plan, sort of like a guide mm. that can help someone uh, plan properly uh, for the future. There's a perception by many people that financial planning only works when somebody receives ends substantial money and when you, you already know what is supposed to be spent in their house, there is no need for financial planning. You know that this salary is already earmarked for milli meal, for cooking oil, for sugar, for a kg of meat, for beans, for carpenter, mm -hmm. uh, and for soap. Mm -hmm. What is there to plan about that? That's the argument. Maybe you can advise on that. Okay. Yeah. So just on that, I think it's important uh, for employees um, or an individual uh, to know or, or determine their needs and their wants. So you need to know what your needs are. Obviously, some of the needs you've already mentioned, mm. you've talked about your, your water. That's definitely a need. Um, our electricity, food. We need to put food on the table. That's definitely a need every day. Um, but we also have wants. So wants are some of the things that we may not necessarily need right there and then, but this is something that we, we want. Mm. La certain luxuries. Go and watch a movie. Exactly. You can maybe decide to This is a stressful time. So. Okay. <laughs> or going out on a holiday. Exactly, yeah. holiday, you have yes. You convince your family that is, is not life and death. Exactly. Yeah. So you mm. need to plan for such things. Um, and that's why, that's how your, 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 your financial plan then, then comes in. I mean, it's not bad to want something. Mm. Um, we're, we're meant to live a full life. So it's, it's, it's also okay um, to want the good things as well. But we need to plan for those things. And that's why, that's how a financial plan uh, comes into perspective. So in other words, you must plan for your holiday. You must be able to plan for 
um, going to watch a movie every oh. weekend, going to plan for your clothing. Going, so, but there must be a distinction between the needs and wants. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There has mm -hmm. to be that distinction because you know that that's extra um, income that yeah. you need to support that, that lifestyle. Yeah. And, and for that, you need to ensure that from you're not removing anything from your needs to, um, I'm trying to look for the right word yeah, for it, yeah, yeah. to support that, mm -hmm. sort of like support that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So you're try, you're basically you're, you're living within your means. But there's a moral hazard factor here. Mm -hmm. That is a bank who is in the business of lending money and, of course, keeping savings mm -hmm. and now involved in financial literacy People simply say, well, after all, you are the ones who are teaching us about how to manage money, even if I don't pay, you understand money. How do you, as a bank, interact with the different people in terms of financial literacy? So, Chibamba, we can't run away from the fact that uh, we are a financial institution. So one of the things that we do, obviously, is, is finance um, people's um, Mm. needs um, so or projects or whatever it may be um, so but us being a responsible lender I mean the bank being a responsible lender uh, we've taken it upon ourselves to offer financial literacy at no cost at all um, to organizations obviously speaking to their employees so that they know the true cost of of, of debt Let's get to the issue of debt. Thank you for the cue. Um, what can be the possible challenges of taking too much debt to yourself? And I know this is an experience out there for many employees. It is actually. Um, for a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, we can't run away from that. Um, none of us can run away from that. So the issue of debt actually causes a lot of stress if one has overborrowed from um, a lot of institutions. We find that a lot, um, Chibamba, especially under workplace banking, mm. because when we are at the workplace um, and an employee wants to borrow, one of the things that they will uh, bring to us as mm. a requirement is their, is their pay slip. And from their pay slip, we're able to see that this client is actually overborrowed and they're stressed just by looking at their pay slip because they have borrowed from different institutions, which is also costly. Mm. So we advise them that they actually need to consolidate their debt, okay, bring them under one umbrella, uh, one financial uh, institution, um, and so that at least we relieve that stress. They have something extra, um, obviously, to, to yeah, take home. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that they can discuss with the bank manager and say, look, how do I consolidate? Because some people don't know how to do that. Uh, that, cons debt consolidation. That's true. Yeah. So do they come to the bank manager and say, look, I'm borrowed with bank A, bank B, bank C, but I want you to help me? Is that something that you can advise the bank? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We do advise uh, our clients. We're at the workplace. We're speaking to them. Uh, we talk to them. Once we look at their work payslip and we've seen that they're overborrowed, we'll advise them to say, look, uh, this is actually costly for you. You need to consolidate your debt. Um, we can actually, as a bank, um, help you yeah. or to refinance so that we consolidate your debt mm. um, to relieve that pressure um, of yeah. being overborrowed, obviously. Yeah. 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 Earlier on, you talked about you as the bank going out to the workplace, to the employers, mm -hmm. under these circumstances of COVID because of weak cash flows for most of the companies, mm -hmm. most of your clients, and you begin to work out some kind of monetarium for them. But in terms of individuals, now we're talking generally in terms of individuals who are highly leveraged and so much debt, their debt is stressed. Would you advise that it is important on their own to come and share their situation with you as a bank? Oh, yes. Um, so our clients, even as, as an individual, are, are free to come and see us, uh, come to a branch. Uh, see our customer uh, consultants uh, who will be able to advise them in terms of uh, how they can actually consolidate their, de their debt or if it's refinancing uh, of their loans. Um, if it's something that uh, obviously they've seen that they're stressed, um, they can just walk 
through to our, one of our branches and our customer consultants will be able to attend to them. Yeah. In other countries, debt rating is such a very, very big yeah. thing. And I know that in countries like the USA, you're, you are actually graded in terms of yeah. your debt credit rating. Is this very prominent in Zambia about how individuals are perceived by the bank in terms of how they manage the debt with you? Does that count a lot with you? So I, I actually like that question. Mm. And the reason being, uh, one, um, we have what we call a credit reference bureau um, that, that looks obviously into that. Uh, if a client has a, ba a bad debt, obviously that's registered on the credit uh, reference uh, bureau. But where we're coming from, and maybe if I can just bring, the, bring in this um, at this time, um, what we're actually doing now, and, and now I'm looking at financing, um, we, we are, we are, we're offering uh, digital loans. Oh. Um, yes, we are offering digital loans. Now, I know we've talked about financial literacy, yes, but I'm just yes. trying to drive a point Absolutely. here. It's very um, and this digital loans is from a background where, obviously, we've, we've sort of like rated mm. uh, our employee, our clients mm -hmm. or I employees. Um, so we've rated them um, and we're able to extend um, financing to them through our digital platforms. So we've gone a step further. Our clients don't uh, actually need to step into the bank, into an actual branch. They can access these services uh, on their internet banking platform. Mm. And again, I must stress, if it is a need um, for our client to finance a project, they want to buy um, some land um, out there or build, uh, obviously to grow their assets, mm. um, they can access financing, but we've made it easier for them. Um, so we've done away with paper. Um, we are now offering our loans on our digital platforms. Right, and when um, planning, Managing finance, managing risk, and creating wealth, very, very important for everybody. It is very important. Yeah. So what are the things or some of the things that someone can do in order to achieve this? Okay. The first thing um, is obviously to treat yourself as a business, as an individual. As you a need business. To, as a business. Um, whether you're earning a salary, you're self-employed, you have a business, um, treat yourself as a business. That's step number one. Two, you need to take stock um, of your cash flows. Um, do a review of your financial statement. Um, where are you right now mm. and where do you want to be? And then you start working towards uh, that goal. That's step number two. Um, step number three, um, you know we have people out there um, who are good at what they do. Even in an employment set, mm. uh, setup, we get mentors. Um, in a business uh, setting, we also need mentors. The people that can actually grow us, uh, help us to get to where we want to be. So we need to uh, ensure that we have mentors, we have coaches um, who are out there to encourage us and just to help us get to where we want to be. Mm. Um, another step, the next step actually is... Um, we we're really very hard on ourselves. We are hard on ourselves. Um, I think when we fall, um, we just need to ensure that we get back up. You, 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 you've hit rock bottom mm. and you really don't know how to get, get, get yourself out of there. Um, so get yourself up, dust yourself up, uh, get up and just well, keep going. Very encouraging. Yeah. Let's, let's get to the final part of this discussion. It is anticipated, that's really my perception, it is anticipated that we'll come to another normal. I don't want to call it a new normal, really, the real normal. And th things will stabilize sooner than later. Uh, what are some of the lessons that you may have learned as a bank during this COVID period? What are some of the issues that we can uh, learn from the customer, the way they have managed themselves, um, especially with regard to workplace banking services? That's true. So, and thank you for that question. Um, and I'll make reference to a report that I read from Mackenzie. Um, I know we, we're starting to see economies open up. Mm. And, um, but what the report actually said is that 
you know, the future is, is uncertain. We don't know um, if things will go back to the way they used to be. Um, so as a bank, um, we just want to assure our clients that we're here to support them. Uh, we have proactively engaged our clients during the COVID period, um, like I earlier on mm. mentioned, just to check on them, um, see how their businesses are faring. Again, uh, Chibamba, um, the government through the Bank of Zambia has released that 10 billion. Um, our clients can also tap into that um, just to relieve the stress on their cash flows. Um, we have also gone a step further um, for employees from the workplace um, by offering them uh, moratoriums. And this is where obviously uh, where the employer has indicated that uh, they are stressed in terms of their cash flows. Uh, maybe they've had to lay off mm -hmm. um, some of their workforce or sending them on, 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 uh, on leave. Um, so that's where we're coming in as a bank. Um, and I would just like to assure our clients we're in this together. Um, as a bank, we're here to support our clients um, just to ensure that we relieve them, relieve mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. of some of the stress um, and so that they actually have a happy workforce. And that's the purpose of Tilly Pamozi, right? Oh, yes. Well, <laughs> just to wrap it up now, uh, some companies may want to engage with you immediately, whether during this COVID period now, they want to be in touch with you, they have, they have watched you, listened to you. How do they do that? Okay. So... Our clients uh, can actually contact us uh, through our relationship managers. They can also call our customer care center on uh, 8200 and we should be able to get back to them. What and how are you managing during this COVID, especially workplace again? Just to... Workplace banking. Yeah, yeah. So very funny, to remember, but we've also had to adapt very quickly, mm -hmm. I must say. Um, so remember I talked about us visiting the workplace. Yeah. So we're actually now having uh, conferences on Microsoft Teams where we're speaking to uh, employees mm. who uh, are being onboarded um, through mic Microsoft Teams. We're having that interaction and they're able to ask questions uh, and we're able to respond Fantastic. using that medium. Fantastic. Who knew? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you may find that it remains a permanent feature in, uh, in future. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Been very enlightening. Just been talking to uh, Chilombo Tembo, the head workplace banking. And um, we really focus on managing financial health and the importance of financial literacy in challenging times. And remember, this is Tilly Pamonzi, Stan Big demonstrating to its clients that they are committed to be with them during this particular tough time. And this has been Chibamba Kanyama. Thank you so much, and God bless you.